is he not condemning this attack on fundamental rights and freedom of workers? Well, I guess in the meantime, Canadians will have to continue to drive to the United States where these medications are widely available for parents. But back here at home, uh, the Prime Minister's half trillion dollars of inflationary deficits have given us a 40-year high in inflation. Now they're driving up interest rates, inflationary taxes, including the Prime Minister and NDP plan to triple, triple, triple the carbon tax, uh, threaten to force Canadians to turn off the heat during winter. Tomorrow is the fall economic update. Will the government commit today to freezing spending and freezing taxes? Yeah. Right, Honourable Prime Minister. While the Conservatives engage in personal attacks and focus on me, we're going to continue to focus on helping Canadians, whether it's directly with a carbon uh, a price on pollution that is going to restore, put more money in the pockets of Canadians where it applies, whether it's moving forward with a GST rebate that's landing this Friday in, in many Canadians' households, or whether it's moving forward on low-income supports for renters and uh, support for dental care for kids, two initiatives that Conservatives continue to stand against. Mr. Speaker, Canadians deserve a government that continues to stand up for them, not Conservative rhetoric. This from the guy, this from the guy that robbed a record amount of Canadian workers' paychecks when he imposed the highest inflation in 40 years on them. And there was no negotiation for workers. In fact, they all took an across-the-board pay cut without ever giving their permission. And now, his posi the position of his government is that they should have their pay cap. The governor of the Bank of Canada told CEOs that there should be no pay hike for Canadian workers to compensate them for this Prime Minister's inflation. Does he agree with the governor of the Bank of Canada that workers don't deserve a pay hike? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah. The right, Honourable Prime Minister. He's actually trying to pretend he's standing up for workers right now when he is refusing to condemn a suspension of their most fundamental rights to collective bargaining. Mr. Speaker, workers' ability to negotiate uh, a, better, a better future for themselves and their families is core to this, can this country's middle class success. Why is he not condemning this attack on fundamental rights and freedom? I see the emotions are running a little bit high, so I'm going to ask everybody to take a deep breath. Everybody, order. Everybody, look at me and take a deep breath. All together now. Okay, now we're going to calm down. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. I am condemning the attack this Prime Minister has undertaken on Canadian workers mm -hmm. by giving them the go. highest inflation in 40 years, eating up their paychecks so that they cannot afford food. It is this Prime Minister who has sent 1.5 million Canadians Shameful. to the food bank in the month of March. This Prime Minister, who's given them record credit card debt. This Prime Minister, who's forced one in five of them to skip meals because they can't afford to eat. And now, his Governor of the Bank of Canada says that those workers don't deserve a raise. I condemn those comments. Will he? Here, here, here.